Hello everyone, so in this video we're going to go over how to use Ajax to retain the names and avatars of users of your website. Okay, so you may have noticed this video is a little shorter than my normal videos, and that's because I'm trying to separate this video into little parts that kind of make sense. So this is how you make the database. Part two is going to be the HTML, part three, etc, etc, etc. They're all going to make sense, and this is only because you don't want to sit through a 20 minute video. It's discouraging, you kind of go oh, halfway through, you get a little bit bored or whatnot. So this allows you to skip through parts if you're already at a different stage. So if you're implementing this search into your website that already exists, that's great. You can skip over this video and go to part two. You don't need to see this bit this is just how you set up the database if you already have a website it'll already be set up okay so continuing on here i've already created a database in php my admin called tutorials um and inside this obviously you've got to create a name for the for a table so my name is going to be users and that's because it's going to hold the users for our database for our for our website the number of columns should just be free in our case just three and then we click go and it'll create the the setup for this so the first column is going to be id and that's literally going to be the user id it's going to be totally unique therefore it needs to be the primary key and i'm going to set the ai excuse me which just means auto increment as you can see when we hover over it this literally is self-explanatory it means that if there's 10 users each will have their own individual id that will auto increment starting with one so if i click this i'll get a pop-up that says do you want to make this the primary key which means this is the unique identifier for every row so click go and now that's the primary key this type is going to stay as int and we can set the length and values to maybe three we're never going to get more than a hundred users on this um but if you are if you're going to have thousands of users then the length and values uh, slash values is literally how many carrot how many numbers could there be possibly so if you're going to get a million users you know a million's one followed by six zeros so you're going to need seven here um etc etc so i'm going to leave this as three the next um, column is name, which is literally the user's name, as you saw in the intro. And the type is varchar because it's a variable character. You can put text, you can put numbers, alphanumeric characters, etc. And the length for this is going to be 60 because none of my names use more than 60 characters. Again, if they do, in your case, set it to 100, 200, 300, etc. And then the last thing is going to be image, the image that's associated with that user, this user's profile picture, and identifier that, oh, is this the market I'm looking for? And you'll see the picture and go yes or no. Um, I'm going to set this to text. There are better ways of storing URLs because the image column is going to store the URL for the image. Um, you don't have to give this a length in values because URL could be 3,000 characters if it's a data URI, or it could be 100 characters, 50 characters. So let's just leave this blank. Now we scroll down to the bottom, we can click save, and that will then generate our table for us. Okay, so my hierarchy for this project looks a bit like this. So I'm going to have index.php here when we get to that. There's a JS file, a CSS file, and the includes file. And that's what we're going to focus on now. So I'm going inside the Sublime, and I'm going to create a new file. In this case, I'm going to save it and call it init.php, which is my database connection file. This video is all about the database. So I'm going to open a PHP tag here, go down a couple of lines, close it off. And then here's where I'm going to define the variables that allow us to connect to the database that you've just seen us create. So we need host. We need user, we need password, and we need database. So our host, as you saw before, was localhost. Our user is pretty standard for localhost, which is just root. It doesn't have a password, so we can leave this blank. And the database was called, um, it was called tutorials. So now we've got all our variables defined. So we go down a couple of lines and this uh, variable has got what we're going to use to call queries. We're going to use SQLI, which is obviously you may have heard of SQL. This is SQLI, which is kind of a newer version of SQL, uh, of, of the standard SQL. And the way we do this is we're going to define a variable using the dollar sign in, in, in PHP. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see this. And then we're going to call it con. Um, there's no real reason for this. This can be called anything, but a con obviously stands for connection. Um, the first time I learned to connect to databases, I saw this guy use con. So that's kind of just what I've used, but you can use anything at all. And then we're going to say isqli underscore connect and close that off with a semicolon. And now we need to just include and put inside this. We need to give it the parameters that we've defined up here. So the first is host, give it the host name. The second is user. This is the third is pass, the password. And then the fourth is database. Now we're going to say if con, which is if the connection, if the connection is, is a valid connection, then echo, yay, like that. And let's save it. Let's go here. And now we can open it with localhost 8080, which is what I'm using. And then slash search, slash includes, 
and then we get the directory listing which is in it and if it says yeah yeah that means it's connected and we can test this by changing tutorials to a, a, a wrong name and then we see we get an error so that means that when this is when this is spelled correctly when everything's done right we get yay so that's perfect and that's this whole video done that's how we connected the database in SQLI, and that's how we've made our database. So join me in part two, where we'll go over the HTML and CSS markup that creates the search box.